This is Mission Control Houston. The International Space Station's Expedition 36 crew is wrapping up a busy week on orbit, one in which they have split most of their attention between things coming in and things going out. The station received more than seven tons of supplies when the automated transfer vehicle number four docked to the Zvezda module on June 15th. Station Commander Pavel Vinogradov and European Space Agency astronaut flight engineer Luca Parmitano opened the hatch to the Albert Einstein on June 18th, and the crew members started unloading the cargo, which included materials ranging from new hardware, like a new water pump assembly for the Columbus Laboratory module, to science experiment material, like the uh, phases investigation, which looks into how emulsions maintain their structures in microgravity, as well as clothes and other supplies for the crew members themselves, along with air and water and propellant. The uh, unloading operations on the European Space Agency provided cargo vehicle continued throughout the week. So did preparation for two crew members to exit the station on Monday, June 24th. Flight engineers Alexander Mazurkin and Fyodor Yurchikin will be going outside next week to replace a fluid flow control valve panel on the exterior of the Zarya module to install clamps there for later cables that will route power from the U.S. segment of the station to a new Russian laboratory module, which is expected to arrive on orbit late this year. They're also going to remove and install experiments on the exterior of the Zvezda module and inspect and take samples of thermal insulation on the outside of the Russian modules. All week long, they and their crewmates have been getting ready for that spacewalk. Yurchikin and Mazurkin studied the timeline. They've gotten familiar with the work sites uh, through the use of graphics in a computer training program. They've checked out the integrity of the Orland spacesuits that they'll wear and outfitted those suits with all the necessary equipment, including helmet lights and cameras that are borrowed from the U.S. spacesuits. On Friday, they got in their Orland suits and completed a training exercise as one of their final preparations for the spacewalk, which is scheduled to begin on Monday the 24th at 8.30 a.m. Houston time. This week, the crew members worked with a variety of experiments, too. On Monday, flight engineer Chris Cassidy took part in the first ever test of how well a crew member on orbit can remotely control a robot on the surface of the heavenly body about which he or she is operating. For this test, uh, Cassidy sent commands to a rover that was located on the ground at the Ames Research Center in California. And developers are working out bugs in the system a system that's intended to help an astronaut that was flying around the moon or an asteroid or some other body use remote control to explore those worlds or to build structures on them that will support future human explorers. Throughout the week, Cassidy, Parmitano, and flight engineer Karen Nyberg worked with the spinal ultrasound experiment. Investigators want to know more about how an astronaut's spine is impacted by being in weightlessness and they use ultrasound to gather data throughout the mission. It'll be studied along with data that is gathered pre-flight and post-flight for comparison's sake. It also, the spinal ultrasound experiment also has the added benefit of developing the technology and examination techniques that can be used by people on the Earth in areas of the planet that don't have access to a large and expensive MRI machine to do the same thing. Crew members had a couple of chances during the week to talk directly to us Earthlings about what they're doing on orbit. On Tuesday, Parmitano conducted an interview with Euronews about the arrival of the European cargo ship and his early experiences on board the station. And on Wednesday, Cassidy and Nyberg answered questions about life on orbit from students who were gathered at the Kansas Cosmosphere. Each day throughout the week, uh, Vinogradov and his crew also took care of themselves and their ship. They spent a couple of hours each day exercising to maintain their overall physical fitness and to fight off the harmful effects of spending a prolonged period of time in the low Earth orbit environment. They also conducted the routine maintenance on station systems to keep all of them in good shape to support their science mission. In the weekend, they'll all get a chance for some off-duty time to uh, rest up 
to have conferences with their families on Earth, but also to get ready for the focal point of Monday, a six-hour spacewalk outside the Russian segment of the International Space Station.